draft morning by the birds. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh as we continue our discussion looking at how activists broke into an FBI office in Media, Pennsylvania, in 1971 and disclosed secrets about the FBI's COINTELPRO program. That's counterintelligence program. First, came to public attention with the release of these documents. Uh, we are joined, as well as Bonnie uh, and John Raines, um, who were among those who broke into the FBI office that day, March 8, 1971, um, by the reporter who broke the story then and now, released the names of uh, those involved with this break-in, Betty Metzger. Uh, she wrote The Burglary, The Discovery of J. Edgar Hoover's Secret FBI. We're also joined by David Carries, who has represented this group until this day for, what, more than 40 years? 43 years. 43 years. But, John Raines, why have you decided to come forward 43 years, what, 42 years later? Well, the simple answer is uh, a book came out. <laughs> and, uh, of course, that's not accidental. We decided uh, years ago that uh, we would trust Betty uh, with this story, and she's done a wonderful job uh, spending uh, years of research uh, writing a very substantial book, it tells a very interesting story. Uh, we decided that it was time to, once again, come forward with a question of government surveillance, government intimidation, and the right of citizens to vocally dissent. I think that the, the gasoline of democracy is the right to dissent, because wherever there is power, wherever there is privilege, power and privilege are going to try to remove, insofar as they can, from public discourse anything they want to do. That leaves the citizen's right to dissent as the last line of defense for freedom. Now, that's what we were faced with back in 1970s. I think that's what we're faced with once again today. It should not surprise us. I mean, it should not surprise us that those in power in Washington want to make the decisions that really count off stage, out of sight from the rest of us. But democracy depends upon the rights of citizens to have the information they need in order to put them, the citizens, who are the sovereigns, for them to decide what the government should be doing and should not be doing. They must have that information so that they can make up their minds. Explain that moment that night uh, when Betty Metzger came over and you revealed who you were. What year was it? I think that was 1988. Uh, we'd known Betty when she was a reporter there it was in. More than uh, 20 Philadelphia. years ago. Oh, more than 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, she, uh, Betty was then living uh, in San Francisco, but she was uh, on a trip to the East Coast, and we invited her for supper. And uh, Betty was nice enough to uh, say, sure, I'll come. Uh, and uh, I think it was we had had supper, and finally our youngest daughter, Mary, came down. She was, uh, I think, 12 or 13, something like that. And um, without thinking about it, I just said, Mary, come on in. Uh, we want you to meet Betty Metzger. She was the one that we sent those FBI files to. And uh, <laughs> Betty's chin <laughs> dropped down to her chest, <laughs> and it was out of the bag. That's how it started. And David Carey's, uh as the attorney who's, who's worked on this case for so long, could you talk about the significance of the statute of limitations on the case, as well as what you saw as the illegality, what was indeed the illegality of what these documents exposed about what the FBI was doing? Sure. The, uh, the statute of limitations, by any fair reading, is five years. The FBI themselves closed the file in 1976 because five years had elapsed and there was no charges. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there are arguments one can make, but there's really no legitimate or good faith basis to bring any legal, any legal charges at this point. Uh, as for the, the illegality of the FBI, they're, they're supposed to enforce the law. Here they are interposing themselves as a, almost a political counterforce to stop certain movements, and, and it, it had a direction to it. They were stopping left liberal movements, uh, and they were <clears throat> using techniques that we usually associate with uh, state police in, in countries and systems that we usually think of as alien. And how did you come to become involved in the case? 
Well, um, I was regularly doing civil rights work, uh, and uh, I was I would uh, represent demonstrators of all kinds, and so two of them check with me before where what's my home number, and they Keith kids me that he still got my uh, my phone number from back then on his arm, um, and so that was the beginning. I didn't know then exactly what they were going to do, but then two of them got arrested in the Camden Twenty Eight case where I, I was a uh, lead counsel. And in uh, fact, remarkably, five days before this break-in, uh, Bill Davidon met with Henry Kissinger at the White House, the national security advisor for Richard Nixon. Yeah. I w I, we don't have time for the story, but we're going to talk about it in our post-show interview, and we'll post online at democracynow.org. How was this secret kept for so many decades? It's not just the two of you, John and Bonnie Raines. Uh, there were nine of you. One person dropped out. There were eight of you. This is decades later. How did you keep the secret? Well, we hundred FBI agents looking for you, and Bonnie, you had gone into the FBI office yeah. immediate to case it out and pretend you were a young woman looking for an FBI job, and sat with the uh, official there, mm -hmm. and did not know following that that there was a sketch that was then circulated of me um, by the FBI. Uh, it was uh, we we we, we knew seconds. we knew that we had to pull the curtain down not meet after we did our work and just not talk about it with anybody at all because our work was done at that point and we were not looking for anything more than for the general public and the and congress to follow suit in a way that we hoped they would do you feel it accomplished what you wanted i think in certain ways in certain ways it did uh, we were encouraged when there was a church committee that was that was taking their task seriously and there were there were reforms that did take place. I want to thank you so much for all being with us and also thank Joanna Hamilton. Her film 1971 on the same subject is just coming out. We'll be interviewing I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global grassroots news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org today. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.